Hi, my name is Richard Curtis. I work for Adobe here in the UK. I'm a solutions consultant with a focus on digital imaging. Today, we're going to look at Lightroom and applying global adjustments to your images. We've been focused on importing our images into Lightroom and also looking at how to rank and select pictures that we're going to edit in Lightroom. Now, we don't want to work on every single image, just a range of them. And the idea of ranking and uh, selecting the images is really to focus on the best images that we have to work on with the amount of time we have available. So let's get on to editing and working on your pictures in Lightroom. All editing in Lightroom is done inside the development tab. There are two types of editing. One is called general editing for everything on the picture and one is called local editing or local adjustments. And that is really where you can define which part of the image you're going to work on. Firstly though, we're going to look at global adjustments. Before we go into the editing process, let's look at the histogram inside Lightroom to see what's going on with the picture. If you look at the left hand side, you'll see we have the shadow area. In the middle, we have the mid-tone area and in the far right, we have the highlight area. Lightroom calculates this for you automatically, so it enables you to make a decision on what to do with your picture and how to make it look amazing. In photography, we're always looking at the perfect exposure, the way that our tones are equally distributed in the mid-tone area, so we have a nice curve in the mid-tone, and then it shallows off into the highlights and the shadows. This gives us a nice, well-balanced picture that we like the look of. But typically, our pictures when they're taken in the camera may be underexposed or slightly overexposed. You can see here, for example, on this picture I've chosen to show you today, that there's, it's, it's an okay exposure, but there's a lot of shadow areas and a lot of highlight information, and not a lot in the middle. And you can see that in the histogram. In the histogram here, it's very flat in those midtones. So using Lightroom, we're able to work on this picture and make it look better by extracting more information out those highlights, those shadows, and actually increasing the values in the, in the mid-tones. You can see in the histogram, we have these little icons at the top in the highlight area and the shadow area. This is showing us something called highlight clipping. So if the shadows go into total black and the highlights go into total white, we can tell where they are. And we can do that very quick, very quickly by pressing either the highlight clipping point or by pressing the shadow clipping point. And you see there, when I pressed the highlight clipping point, a red patch appeared on the picture. And that's telling me that that area is clipping outside the, um, outside the range of, of, what, uh, of, of what the picture can, 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 can show. And I can turn them on and off by using the J key, and the J key will turn them both off, and will turn them both on. So we've already established that a global adjustment will work on everything around the picture and that's how we use to manipulate and control the areas of the scene and the, and the tones that we will show in the final picture. There are also many other tabs in Lightroom as well, and Lightroom's organized this way to make it really easy for you to navigate through the steps that you need to do. So for example, you'll start off in the Basic tab, and then you might move to um, the Details tab or the Lens Correction tab, and, and go through these tabs. And we'll go through most of them today. We'll miss off some of the advanced ones, but focus on more of the ones to get you started up and running and make your images look amazing. But first of all, we need to make sure that we're working with the right, what's called, process version. And the process version contains all of the calculations and the maths to really make Lightroom sing. Now this is Lightroom 5, and in Lightroom 5, we are using something called process version 2012. Process version 2012 came out with Lightroom 4. And in Lightroom 4, we made significant improvement to the basic tab. In process 2012, we separated working on the shadows and the highlights, so you can now work independently on both those areas of the picture to really pull out all the information in the shadows and increase the highlight values to bring all that information out the highlights as well. We also worked on the clarity slider to improve how the clarity works and to create that edge contrast. This tutorial assumes that you're using Lightroom 4 or Lightroom 5 and have Process 2012. If you have something earlier than Lightroom 4, then these features will be slightly different. If you are using Lightroom 4 or Lightroom 5, just make sure that you are using Process version 2012. It's the default, so it should be there when you install the software. Okay, so. Normally what happens when you take a picture 
you pretty much know how it's going to look when you, when you finish it or when you publish it. But that's not to say that you might not want to do some experimentation. And Lightroom is a great way to do some experimentation with your images. So the first thing you may want to do is to work out if you'd like this image in black and white or in color. And you can do that very, very quickly in Lightroom. I want to show you a little trick here that you can do. Now you see all these tabs are all closed. If I open a tab and open a different tab, the other tabs will close. If I right click on any of those tabs on the name, you can see something called solo mode in the flyout menu. Make sure this is turned on and then you will have the same effect. You just be able to work on the panel that you've chosen and the panels will automatically collapse based on another panel opening. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the basic tab. We've already thought about changing this to be color or black and white. And we can do that very, very simply by switching between the two. For example, it's now in color and I can see that because the treatment is in color, but I could switch to black and white quite quickly as well and the whole thing will turn to black and white. But don't worry, that's okay. I can still go back to color very quickly, either by clicking on the color or at any point going backwards. So say for example, I move this to black and white and to go backwards one step, I can press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac. That takes me back one step and you can see on the screen there, it says undo. It's also available on the settings, reset all settings, shift, command or control R. So I'm gonna assume we're gonna keep this in color for now. We can look at black and white later. The first thing I noticed though, is that the exposure may or may not be too dark for this picture. So you know through experience, especially in a picture like this, that the sky is too bright, therefore increases the exposure and darkens down the foreground. So let's look at the exposure for a second and see if we can move the exposure slider. All these sliders can be moved and can be readjusted to get exactly the right picture uh, that we want to achieve. So let's just move the exposure. Now as I move the exposure slider, the whole scene brightens, but look what happens to the highlight area. As I move the exposure up, the whole image increases in brightness and it opens up that highlight area but the foreground is okay. Now I'm gonna to have to move around these a little bit to fix this picture. And what I want to do is to look at the highlight area. Now I mentioned before that the highlight slider is a, a, enabling us to work on just the highlights of this image. So I can adjust the highlight slider to the left or to the right. To the right will open up the highlights. If I move to the left, it will close down the highlights and try to recover as much as it can. Now, you can see there that when I move the slider slightly to the left, the red area or the highlight clipping reduces. And if I keep going to the left, you can see that we start to bring more tones back into the highlight area. You can also see that the histogram in the highlight area has been recovered a little bit. Now, we also want to work on the shadow area because the shadow area down here is where we're in the dark. And over here in the histogram, we want to open that up a little bit and show more detail. And we can do that in the shadow slider. I'm able to open up those tones inside the shadow area. And you can see there that I'm pulling out all the highlights and all the shadows, and it creates me this image that is actually really nicely exposed. So I don't need to move the exposure slider. And you can actually tell that. You can see the histogram is actually really well placed inside the middle of the, of the histogram. So moving it too far will increase the highlight values on one side or reduce the shadows on, one, on the other side. So the two sides of having highlights and shadows is a great way to lift that picture and pull that information out. So the next thing we need to do is add a little bit of contrast. At the minute it's, it's a little bit flat and we can do that very, very quickly. We can just move the black slider to the left or to the right. And as I move to the left and the areas of blue are where the shadows are moving to black. We can also press the Alt key when we're moving this slider and you can see where the tones are moving to black. Now, I quite like putting a little bit of black in because that gives me a little bit of contrast. While I'm doing that, I just want to remove any um, highlight or shadow clipping because I can control that using the Alt key. So I can press the J key and the J key will remove the highlight clipping from the scene and I can control it just using the Alt key and the sliders. Now let's just experiment a little bit more. Let's just move the white point. I'm gonna press the Alt key and move the white point. And you can see the white point starts to clip exactly where it clipped before. And actually I would like this to be just a little bit 
a little bit at the clipping point. So I'm just moving the white slider with the Alt key pressed down, and you can see the mask is now generated, so I can see exactly what's clipping and what's not. Just a little bit open to about there. And actually, this adds me a little bit more contrast. So you can see now, we've got a really punchy scene. So now we've got a pitch to look at. Let's look at the color balance. Underneath the white balance combo box, we have automatic. The automatic will let Lightroom look at the white balance and it will decide what the white balance should be because in camera, it may or may not be correct. So let's do it auto what happens. And you can see there it adds a bit of yellow and it just warms it up a little bit. Now, if you like that look, that's okay. You can keep it there. If you don't like that look, you can press command Z to go back one or you can go to as shot in the white balance. But you can also customize the white balance as well. So to customize this, you can pick up the white balance tool and move it over the picture. Now, as I'm moving it over the picture, the little thumbnail is changing and you can see how the white balance is now being represented in the scene. If I move it over here to the green, it goes more blue. And if I move it into the brown, it goes a bit green and blue. But actually I want it where it was before. So I'm just gonna choose a little bit of the gray point in the sky. So I'm looking for gray and I'm gonna choose this bit of gray. Now the other indicator is that I can look at the three points underneath this loop. It's now, it's showing me red, green, and blue values. The closer those values are together, so all three very similar, will give me a gray point. So I can actually use that as a guide to get this balance exactly right. So that's not bad, 62, that's pretty good. I select that, and that's actually a pretty good white balance that I can use for this scene. So now I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only thing I might want to do is add some more contrast at the global level, and I can do that by adding the clarity, and the clarity will just add a little bit of mid-tone contrast. It gives it more of a boost. I can reset any of these sliders by double-clicking on the name, and I can zoom in. So I'm going to zoom one-to-one uh, -one and zoom in on the cowboy there, and just up the clarity, and you can see that the face is becoming a little bit brighter and the darks are becoming a bit darker. Adds a little bit more contrast and a little bit more mood. And I quite like that. That's giving me quite a good representation of that picture. I can also see what it looked like before we started making adjustments. Down here we have the before and after. Let's just click on the little down arrow. We can see before and after left right split and we can choose whichever one we want to look at. So let's just choose before, after, left and right. And you can see there that I have a full image inside Lightroom and that shows me what happened before and what happened afterwards. So I can see how much impact those first sliders in the basic tab have made. Now you can see that actually just by moving it a little bit here and there and customizing the sliders, I get an amazing image out of the shot that I, I had. I also may want to have before and after split so I can see in one picture before and after, so I can get a, an indication of what changed and what didn't. And to change that back, I can just click on the little single and it brings me back into the single view mode. There are two other sliders here on the basic panel of the worthwhile talking about. One is the vibrance. Now the vibrance alters the saturation but leaves the skin tones. So if I move this up and down, you'll see the vibrance and the color start to change inside the, in the horse and the, and the cowboy, um, but it doesn't touch the face. If I up the saturation, the saturation will work on the intensity of all the colors, including the face. If you like desaturated pictures, you could desaturate this scene into just very, very mellow colors by just moving it to the negative. Just put that back to where it was, set it to zero. I can also type in to these values as well. So I want to reset this to zero, put a zero in there, and that resets that for me. So I can go completely on the keyboard. Now it may want to see if or what this looks like in black and white. So I can very quickly click on the black and white and it shows me what it looks like. It looks pretty nice. And I can either use the color or the black and white. Just one thing to notice is that when I'm making these changes, I'm also getting a history. And the history is showing me everything that I did to the picture. So I can go back and forth. I could go back to, um, right back to the uh, initial import and click on that. But I can, if I want to, go to any of the above settings at any point in time and I can then see the results that I made. So it's pretty comprehensive and pretty easy to use. The other thing that you may want to do inside the development module on the global area is some sharpening. And sharpening is used to really accentuate edges 
and definition in the picture. If I look at the picture, you can see this little uh, magnifying glass with a plus on it, and this is always available. And I can just click on the screen and I can then get into my picture in a bit more detail so I can look at those edges and see how the sharpening is working. If I go to the details panel, notice again that the basic panel collapses for me. I can see there's a little bit of sharpening applied. I can turn sharpening off by just reducing the amount to zero and there's no sharpening. But it's likely that you may want a bit of sharpening because out of the camera sometimes images are a little bit softer than reality. And you can see as I put more sharpening in, the images become sharper. We work very closely with, um, with camera companies and make sure that the lenses that you're using are correctly calibrated. Some lenses can create something called vignetting, which is darkness around the edges of the picture. And we can easily fix that by using the Enable Profile Corrections. If we click on this, on the Profile tab, you see that it actually pulls the image into right perspective and gets rid of any vignetting on the outside. You can also see that from the metadata brought in by the image on the import, we're able to pick up the lens and the profile that we're using for that vignetting correction. The other element I want to talk about is the post-crop vignette. You may want to apply vignetting to a picture. So in the olden days of traditional darkroom printing, they used to burn the edges of the printing, so actually you would focus on the image itself. And this is a great example because all that white, you might fall out of the image or your eyes might fall out of the image. So by using a post-crop vignette, I can just put a bit of burning in on the edges and you can see it darkening down. And then I can change these sliders to control how much vignette is applied and, and how it's applied. I also may want to apply a little bit of film grain and that film grain kind of roughs up the image a little bit, gives it a little bit more texture. I like to do that quite a bit and put a bit of grain in there. If I just zoom in, you can see if I put more grain in there, you can see how it affects the picture. So here's some great creative ways that you can represent your image and make it look absolutely wonderful and, and fantastic when you when you finished. So that's what I want to show you so far on global adjustments inside Lightroom development module. Thank you.